First, let me apologise. Sorry, I've been up for 28 hours. Well, I was up for 28 hours solid, updating the site with the latest understandings, believing that there'd be a sign yesterday. And then I've got five hours sleep, so I, I may be a bit groggy in this talk. All right, so with me, I can never see the error until I've finished updating the site. Only when I've finished updating the site, it's all done, and I think I've done my job, can I relax. And then when I relax, I see the mistake. It always works like that. Unfortunately, I can't halfway through think, oh, is, is this right? I have to follow it through, and sometimes a flag gets raised. But I, I finished it, and only after I'd finished updating the whole site did I think, wait a minute, there's something that doesn't fit. And what didn't fit was this. We know that the Watchdown missed, or we thought we knew, that the Watchdown missed 4,696 weekly Sabbaths from 19... 15, Sivan, 7, the Pentecost when they were installed, the first 1NC Pentecost after the end of the continuous Gentile times on, on, on 1914, Tishri 15. The first Pentecost after that was 1915, Sivan 7, because that was when the first day of the week was, after the, the seven Sabbaths after the first fruits. And if you count the number of weekly Sabbaths they missed until when we thought they fell as a true church, on 2005, Sivan 14, there's 4,696. And if you add them back, because you don't mess around with God with Sabbaths, if you do not celebrate the Sabbath, he will make you celebrate it. And the way he made the Watchtower celebrate it is he, they became a false church, and having broken his sacred Sabbath by doing field service work for God on 4,696 days, they shouldn't have done it on. They should have given them the watchtowers that Sabbath. He then says, fine, you won't be working for me, but you'll stay as a Jehovah's Witness, and the land will keep Sabbath for 4,696 days from working for God, because you'll be a false church for 4,696 days. And that would have expired on Nissan the 13th, 2018, had it begun 2005, Sivan 12. And it would have expired on Nissan 15, 2018, had it begun 2005, Sivan 14, the Sabbath of Pentecost. The problem with that interpretation is we have a watchtower Passover execution occurring on Adar 14 during the period of paying back the Sabbath. God would never do that. The purpose of a Passover execution is to release your people from slavery. God will not release you whilst you're still paying back a Sabbath penalty. But he'd be breaking his own justice, which he does not do. So that was the flaw in our understanding. So then the next question was, well, do we once again bump forward everything so that the first watchtower Passover isn't Shabbat delayed till Adar, the, the late version of it, but is instead Adar delayed till Nisan? Or did we have the incorrect date for the fall of the watchtower? Do we move that backwards to ER 14? And can you do that? This whole exercise in trying to get this date has been the most slippery sucker, to quote Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman, it's a bar of soap. Every time you think you've got it, it shoots out of your hands a month forward. This time it cannot be pushed a month forward. There are three locks on it. The first lock is that the last possible day in the year to celebrate a 2NC Pentecost. The 2NC Pentecost is Heshvan 21. The late 2NC Pentecost is Chislev 21. You can celebrate a late, late 2NC Pentecost because there's a late first fruits. The late first fruits is Heshvan 2, and if you if you celebrated late first fruits, you are supposed to celebrate the late Pentecost on Chislev 21. But if you forgot to do that, you can, you can always go a second time. There's always a second festival. There's, there, there's never a third festival. There is a late, late Pentecost, which is a third festival, only because it's second to the late first fruits count. There are two Pentecost counts, one from Tishri 2 to Heshvan 21, one from Heshvan 2 to Chislev 21. If, you, if you're involved in the second of those counts, you can celebrate Chislev 21 Pentecost 30 days later. So the last possible 20 Pentecostal day is, is Tebeth 21. So the go back seven times is Tebeth 21 to Tebeth 21 of the alienation times, which must end at a Pentecost and begin at a Pentecost. And that, that's what the whole contest is about, that's the go back seven times. And then you have the fulfilment, which is the, the next Pentecost after the seventh time. Now that Pentecost must be within 50 days of the seventh time because of Pentecost, the sequential Pentecost, the Balian Pentecost and the Assyrian Pentecost, which is sequential 50 counts, and obviously they, they must occur once every 50 days. 
So that's why our present prediction runs to ADAR 11, which is the 50th day after Tebe 21, which is the last possible day for two and C Pentecost. So there will be a fire sign before ADAR 11, and therefore there will be an ADAR 14 Passover. That's one lock on this. Why I couldn't push the bar of soap back or have it slip back, slide back another month. The other lock is that we presently have this, the third Holy Spirit taking over Zoa on the late second one in C Pentecost on Ab 8. That's the Pentecost you go to if you, if you go to the second Passover, which is ER 14. You come to the Pentecost after that, and then you miss that, and so you're allowed to go to the late version of that. So that would be the late second 1NC Pentecost. That, again, is the latest possible 1NC Pentecost in a year. You cannot have a later one. There is no way that the Holy Spirit would take over a church other than on a Pentecost, a 1NC Pentecost. It is a first new covenant church, the, the third Holy Spirit. It is the first new covenant church. Jesus is wife. It's that church. So the latest possible day for them to take over Zoa is the day they're doing it. And the latest possible day for a fire sign is ADAR 11. You cannot change either of those. And likewise, the latest possible day for failed 1 AC Adam, for, for Adam with a contract to be Abraham, for Adam in the first Abrahamic covenant who doesn't get sealed, for baptised but not sealed Adam, who's like exchange contracts to be an Abraham but never completes that contract. The last possible day for him to die is three Passovers, Nisan, Ea, Sivan, and then the late version of the Sivan, which is Tammuz. So the Tammuz 14, 2019 day for the end of the first death and the end of Adam and the final Passover execution of Adam. You can't move that. So those three things, none of them can be moved. So we couldn't move the Passover back from Adar 14. So instead we had to look at when did the Watchtower fall. If there was going to be a execution, a Passover execution by Jehovah himself, his Passover angel but authorised by Jehovah, on 2017 Adar 14. You'd have to have the Sabbath being paid back before then, which meant that the Watchtower had to fall round about a month earlier, which meant it would fall not Sivan 14 2005, but ER 14 2005. And then I remembered that I'm counting, you go first because you're the majority, says Elijah to the Prophet of Baal. And there's hundred prophets of Jehovah and, and Elijah, and possibly Ahab and Obadiah, and actually I've forgotten Elijah's attendant. He was definitely on Team Jehovah. So you count back, you know, more or less 450 prophets of Baal, less 100 prophets of Jehovah. You count back about 350, and you, you get to Sivan 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, depending on whether you include Elijah, the attendant, Obadiah, Ahab, who you include. And I was counting back from Sivan 1, because on Sivan 1 I sent the revised Jehovah letter, which was the first time we actually went with. Trouble with that is that the bilateral contest began on ER1 with the first sign of general letter. That, and it definitely began then because the contest is symmetric about noon and it ends on Shabbat 21. So it, it began, we, have it, we had it already, we know the bilateral contest began on ER1. So I'm saying that the contest began but I didn't begin until a month later. But the definition of a bilateral contest is both sides of, uh, are, are doing something. So I obviously didn't begin on Sivan 1, I began on ER1. Therefore you count back the 347, 348, 349, the, the, the majority that the 450 prophets of Baal have over the prophets of Jehovah, or Team Jehovah should we say. You, you count that back, not from Sivan 1, but from ER 1. And when you do that, instead of getting to Sivan 14, as we, as we had in the, in the previous attempt at this, you, you get to ER 14. Now the reason I liked the Sivan 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 interpretation is that we know for a fact the date of the letter that, that the Watchtower wrote say, to the Bethels saying, oh, you know, we joined the UN to get a library card, that's why we did it, uh, nothing wrong with it, but we decided, you know, we'll, we'll leave the UN anyway, but we don't admit any wrongdoing. It's exactly not the letters I get from banks. When banks make a mistake, they don't write, hello, we did this mistake, that's why we're refunding you, because if they do that, you could then sue them. And so what they say is, oh, we don't really, you know, we made a mistake. We're not happy with what we did, so here's a check. They don't say, actually, what we did is we ripped you off because we, we committed this fraud, because then the lawyers would get onto them and you'd get a much bigger settlement than that check. It's exactly what the Watchtower are trying to do with man. It's the same thing. They're not admitting their mistake, and they're in order to protect themselves legally or something. But what they forget is that their problem is with a judge in a higher court than anything on this land. So what they did is they, they showed no repentance for joining the UN, which is, they know is the throne of Satan. And by submitting the Watchtower to UN rules, they put the throne of Satan in the Temple of Jehovah. 
and by joining that outfit they rode the beast as a harlot church. Unforgivable unless you're repentant. But when they said they were unrepentant, they could no longer preside over water baptism of repentance. So 2001, Heshvan 10, date of the letter. And I thought from Daniel 12, where it says, and this, from the removal of the constant feature and the placing of the abomination that causes desolation or the transgression that causes desolation or something, there will be 1290 days until the end of something. And I thought that that would that the constant feature that their water baptism could be regarded as a constant feature, and you count 1290 days at the time of the end of the watchtower from losing the water baptism to the end of the church. So I counted it from to adding 1290 days to 2001 Heshvan 14, say that takes you to 2005 Sivan 14, and then counting back the 347, shall we say, majority, because let's face it, Elijah had an attendant, so. You've got to count him, and if you count his attendant, and well, and you've got to count the hundred prophets of Jehovah who turned up, even though they didn't participate, because if you don't count them, then the watchtower had to have fallen a hundred days earlier, and had they fallen a hundred days earlier, the Sabbath would have been paid off, and we would have had a Passover. The only reason we haven't yet had a watchtower Passover execution, actually, we've had a Passover, but not the execution, not the late Passover. The, the only reason for that is that God cannot do an execution so as to release his people before they've paid off their Sabbaths. He can't. But once they have paid off their Sabbaths, he will immediately, at the next opportunity, do an execution because he wants to release his people. He would like to have done it at the beginning of the kingdom ten years ago, but he couldn't because of, because of first of all maledictions, then wilderness penalties, and now Sabbath payback. These are the three problems that God's people have. Maledictions pay back the Sabbaths and wilderness penalties. And of course the Watchtower came in for the whole lot. We didn't come in for all of them, but we certainly came in for the maledictions. I don't think we got the wilderness penalties, we didn't get to pay back the Sabbaths. Because we, although we probably have missed some Sabbaths and they will have to be paid back. Don't miss God's Sabbaths is the, uh, the advice I would give to every church, uh, an advice which of course this church hasn't entirely obeyed, uh, being the great hypocrites that man is. So those are the three penalties, and he, he won't break his own justice. But I did like the Sivan 14 interpretation, because it's what you get from counting back. 347 majority from the revised sign of Jonah letter on Sivan 1, and you get it from counting forward 1290 days from Heshvan 14, which is the day when they lost their water baptism. However, losing a water baptism is not a fulfillment of Daniel 12.12. 12. It is not a constant feature. For Jehovah's Witnesses. They do not baptise. A constant feature must be done every day. Field service is done every day. That's a constant feature. Water baptisms are only ever done by Jehovah's Witnesses at circuit or district assemblies. Then, and they're done at the weekends. In, during the week there's no water baptism of anybody by that church. Well there wasn't up till 2005 whilst there was still a true church. What well, they do now I don't know but it doesn't matter because they're a false church. So it's not a constant feature, the water baptism whereas the field service was a constant feature. So it's not a fulfilment of Daniel 12.12, 12, which says, from the time the constant feature is removed, and there's been a placing of this constant thing causing, the abomination causing desolation, there'll be 12.90 days. It's not a fulfilment of that. 12.90 is wrong. However, when you look at the vision that in, described in Daniel 12, there were two men in white, one on each bank of a river, and then there was a river and another guy in white, in linen, floating above the river. So you've got a guy on each bank, and then you've got the guy floating above. And the guy on one of the banks says, how long will it be to the end of the wonderful things? There's an ambiguous question. I mean, it'd be much better if he said, can you tell me the exact width of this river, please? Or how wide is my bank? Tell, tell me how wide the left bank is, followed by the exact width of the river, followed by how wide is the right bank? If he'd said that, we'd all know where we stand. But of course, the Bible's not written like that. He said, well, how long will it be till the end? <laughs> not even from which beginning. And the guy at the floating above the waters of the stream, so it's going to be a time, times and half a time, which could be three and a half times, it could be five and a half times, it could be seven and a half times, all sorts of things. Anyway, one possible interpretation is he's asking, how wide is my bank? To which the answer is a time, times and half a time, which could be three and a half times, or 1260 days, rather than 1290 days. And the advantage of that interpretation is, that gives me the extra month that I need. So instead of counting back 347 days from Sivan, one 
and getting to Sivan 14 and then counting forward 1290 days from Heshvan 14 and getting to Sivan 14. You count back 347 days from ER1 when I sent the original signed of Jonah letter and you get to ER14 and then you count 1260 days or 3.5 years from Heshvan 14 and you get to ER14 again. And so, yes, the watchtower fell on ER14. And yes, the bank of a river is this, like the sand of the sea. And the sand of the sea is Abraham's seat, because the land is the congregation that's watered by the river. The sand is stuck to the land, but isn't a part of the land. It doesn't quite know whether it's in the sea or it's in the land. It's, it's the halfway house, it's a beach. And so the sea is the world, the sand is Abrahamic, and the land is Isaiah, the true church with the water baptism. And likewise the bank of a river, that is the Abrahamic thing. After, after you lose your water baptism, you then become the bank of the river. Then at the end of the river bank, that's when you become the false church. So, yes, the watchtower lost their water baptism on Heshvan 14, 2001. And they became a false church on Ea 14, 2005. And we've never known those dates until yesterday. And we knew we had an approximation to both of them, but we were wrong in both cases by either day or month out. Now, that's the perfect day, actually, for them to lose their true church status because the 1AC church, Abrahamic, is very similar to the Jacobean church, the saints. There's the, there's the saints, which are sons of Jacob. There's the priests, water baptized, who are sons of Isaac. And there's the faithful, unwater baptized, but have faith in God. They're Abrahamic, sons of Abraham. Abraham. And the Abrahamic lot and the Jacobean lot, the saints and the faithful, are very similar because they're all chosen by the angels whereas the priests are chosen by man. Now, the watchtower fell over the saints because it missed three Passovers after I explained to them how to celebrate it and, and Dan acknowledged that I was probably right but they weren't going to do it. And I told them God would not forgive them on 95 Nisan 14, 96, 97. God will forgive you if you do it in ignorance. He's not like the world where you ignorance of the law is no excuse. With God, you have to know the law and agree to it before you're held accountable. When you don't know it, he doesn't hold you accountable. You know, they knew the law, and they'd agreed to be a true church, and they knew what they should do. Dan, Dan confirmed that, but they didn't do it. And therefore, after missing three Passovers, they denied Christ three times in that night. They fell over the saints. Likewise, when Laodicea was formed, when I baptised Roger Nani, in 2002, Edward 16, they would have held a Passover 2003 actually ER 14, they, they held it on the different date because they went to the Watchtower Passover, then they held another one on ER 14 because politically you couldn't not attend the Watchtower one because they were, uh, they were Jehovah's Witnesses and Leo de Sins. They were actually Jehovah's Witnesses and Lord's Witnesses. So they held two Passovers, one for each church that they belonged to, which is quite appropriate. So 2003 and Nissan 14, they would have held a Leo de Sins Passover. They didn't think they needed to baptise anybody for that Passover because they thought incorrectly actually that the, 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 the watchtower baptism was sufficient for such a Passover. It wasn't because it didn't exist. It, it had already dried up. But they didn't, they didn't see it was necessary. They thought, we were a 2NC church, so we don't need to baptize in Europe. They held the 2003 ER14 Passover. Just as Jehovah's Witnesses only baptize people at assemblies, district assemblies, circuit assemblies, the Laodiceans initially only baptize people at festival days. So they baptized, they baptized the, the second Laodicean and started the congregation on what we thought was the 2NC festival day, not 2NC Pentecost, the, the day of celebrating the 2NC itself, which was LL16. So they baptized the first people actually 2003 LL16. I baptized Roger Knight himself 2002 LL16. So they do this thing of baptizing on festivals, which is totally unnecessary, but that's what they do. So... They, they celebrated the 2003 Nissan 14, 2004 Nissan 14, 2005, sorry, ER 14, 2005 ER 14 Passover. So the third Laodicean Passover celebration that occurred was 2005 ER 14. That is when the Watchtower Fellows of True Church, because they didn't attend any of those three, re correctly celebrated. I mean, Laodicean may not have celebrated them dead on correctly, but if you try and do the best you can for God, and you do the best of, that your knowledge permits, he will accept that sacrifice. But if you know what to do, and you deliberately don't do it for political or other reasons, he will not accept your sacrifice. A sacrifice is about doing what God wants you to do. It is not about doing what you want to do. You bring the sacrifice he asks for on the day he stipulates. You do not bring your best culinary creation on the day you want to bring it. You bring what he says he wants on the day he wants. 
So the Neolithians did that, the Watchtower didn't. After three times of being condemned by their own people, the Neolithians, on the third attempt, on ER 14, 2005, they again had denied the Christ three times in that night. This time it was the late Passover night. Watchtown never celebrated a late Passover, they know it exists, they know it's a possibility, but they never celebrated it. So they fell over Abraham after the third denial of Jesus, just as they fell over Jacob at the third denial of Jesus. It's the same MO and the same mistake. So they became a false church, 2005 ER 14. What that means is that you have to count the Bali and Pentecost, which define the second fire sign, not from Sivan 14, 2005, but from ER 14. Now, if you count them solar, it doesn't work, because if you count them solar, you get to Tebeth 23, is the is 4600 days, it's the 92nd Bali and Pentecost, and that is after Tebeth 21, so that would have been a fire sign, but there was no fire sign on Tebeth 23. Therefore, you have to count them lunar. I mean, I've never known whether to count these things solar or lunar. I can make good arguments of both. I mean, the argument I'd make for lunar count is that is indeed how you count the 450 prophets of Baal. And so that's how you should count these things. And the other argument I'd make is that satanic people don't get a Sabbath. The whole point about being God's, one of God's people, or one of the whole points, apart from you have to become one of God's people, because just as Elon Musk and Al Gore quite rightly say we have to live in an environmentally sustainable way, you, I say we have to live in a morally sustainable way, and that's the bigger problem. You can be as environmentally sustainable as you like, but if you're morally unsustainable, you can, you can preserve the planet and kill the people on it. Oh, of course, we're, we're destroying both the planet and the people on it, but you've got to be morally sustainable, and that's what Christianity is. That's all it is. It's a way of living that's morally sustainable. It's the minimum set of morally sustainable laws that give us a future. So you have to live that way. But anyway, if you, if you choose to be satanic and not live that way, then what happens is you don't get into God's Sabbath, so you don't get a Sabbath. So the idea that you come to Bali and Pentecost in Sabbath, in solar days, in weekly Sabbaths, in real Sabbaths, is a bit of a non-starter because Satanic people don't get those Sabbaths, and they don't, they don't accept them, and they don't want them. So it does make more sense to count lunar. So if you count it lunar from ER 14, 2005, then the Pentecost is actually Shabbat 24, which is today. So we now expect a fire sign at sunset, sunrise or sunset, probably sunset today. The reason I say sunset is, first of all, Luke 12, 54, 56 says there's a cloud upon west, and west also means sunset because the sun sets in the west. And because the fire sign actually in 1 Kings 18 occurred just after, between the two evenings, just after, at sunset, basically after sunset. And because the attendant on the 7th said, oh look, there's a cloud. Now, Shabbat 24 is the day before the Sabbath. But if you have a sign at sunset on Shabbat 24, then the media coverage of that sign will be Shabbat 25, which is the Sabbath. So the attendant will see the media coverage and say, oh look, there's a fire sign on the 25th. So we expect a fire sign now at sunset, Friday. This game cannot be played any longer than ADAR 11. And it's got to be either solar or lunar. It's not solar, so it's lunar. And I think we now do have the correct date for the fall of the watchtower. And now the, the other thing is that in Haggai 2 it says, Set your heart on the 24th of the 9th. Before there was a placing of a stone upon a stone in the temple of Jehovah, and on the day that the temple was established. And the 24th of the 9th, it could be the 24th of Chislev, the 9th month of sacred year. It also could be the 24th day of the 9th year of the kingdom. And now the ninth old, then Zohar, then new Zohar secular year began Shabbat 1. And the 24th day of that is Shabbat 24. We've set our hearts on several 24ths of nights, and we've always had them broken. Fortunately, they're quite resilient, our hearts, and they seem to fix themselves. So we're now setting our heart once again on the 24th of the night, which is today, sunset today. Now there's one other freaky thing. I'm predicting a rising mushroom cloud from the Thames round about Dartford. Now, I guess what happened yesterday, on one of my prediction days, there was a bomb found in Canary Wharf, London City Airport, Second World War bomb. And they didn't blow it up in the city airport, they took it down the Thames, to Tilbury, I think, and they blew it up. And that produced a rising mushroom cloud above the Thames at the very place I said it would occur. On the very day I said it would occur. Now, I'm not claiming that as a fulfilment of any fire sign. 
And nobody said, oh, Gordon, yes, you're such a brilliant prophet. Well done. The Lord's Witnesses must be the true church as a result of blowing up a Second World War bomb. And it, it, neither does it lead to an East-West confrontation and neither does it start the time of distress. But it, it's just one of these, I hate these things. It's like a half sign. I don't know what it means. I don't know whether it's a wind-up or whether it's an indication that, that we're nearly there. I, I, I don't know. We're not claiming that it's a fulfillment of 1 Kings 18, but it is a very strange coincidence. There was a mushroom cloud above the Thames. I don't think it was much of a mushroom cloud. I haven't seen the video. I was just told that, well, I read the news. I have to watch the video and see that it was there. It, it, maybe it means something, I, I don't know, but I don't think it's a fulfillment of 1 Kings 18, not at all. Especially as it was on a day deduced from the wrong watchtower fall date. All right, so those are the reasons we're going now for Shabbat 24, which is February 15, 16. We expect February's Friday, February the 16th is at sunset. We're predicting the third fire sign, the Odyssean Pentecost on Adar 5, which is February 26, 27. And we're predicting the fourth fire sign, which will be at the Assyrian Pentecost for Adar 10, which is March 3, 4. And you know, that's the last possible day before Adar 11, which would be the end of our southern main predictions, which were 50 days after Tebet 21. So our southern main predictions are still correct. They have to be. But those are the three fire signs to come. Now, Adar 5 is a fascinating day. So the Odyssey and Pentecost, that is where you now get, if you add back the Sabbaths, instead of being 4,696 missed Sabbaths, because they're falling a month earlier, they're actually 4,692 missed Sabbaths. If you add those in Gregorian days, so 2005 AR 14, you end up on 2017 AR 5, which is the Laodicean Pentecost. And that is the day when we baptize Laodicean into this church. So on the very day that they've paid off their Sabbaths, they, they get in the Promised Land. And, and these penalties from Jehovah are precise. Wilderness penalties are precise, and Sabbath paybacks are precise. I mean, and Laodiceans are in a weird situation. They're actually, they were, well, they're in the Watchtower, and they're, they're Laodicean, they're both at the moment. No, I'm not, I've, oh, we, we have them having left the watchtower on, on Tebe 21. I think that's the correct interpretation. They're in this escape boat. So if that's true, mind you, they're still, no, they're not keeping Sabbath. They're in a true church. But maybe they're keeping Sabbath in that church. Hmm. I don't know. But it, it, it seems to be a perfect fit. Certainly, we cannot baptize anybody from the watchtower itself prior to Adar 5, when they will have paid off their Sabbath error. And we'll baptise them, in fact, on Adar 10 and Adar 13 for the Adar 14 Passover. Laodiceans is a bit different. They become a true church. Then They may not be in the watchtower anymore, in which case we could baptise them. Right, so that's the whole deal, and thanks for listening.